Thank you, Chairman. It is my real privilege to join this Hong Kong Therapeutic Endoscopy course again. The title I'm going to cover is EUS Guided Through the Needle Biopsy for Histologic Diagnosis of Pancreatic Cyst. These are the areas I'm going to cover during my talk. Firstly, the general aspect of pancreatic cystic tumor. And then I will discuss the technique of through the needle microposet biopsy. And then finally, I will add some review of literature. Nowadays, we are detecting increasing number of pancreatic cysts and the smaller and the smaller lesions. The differential diagnosis of these lesions is quite troublesome. How do we try to differentiate? We are using currently demographic data, radiologic imaging, including ultrasound, CT, MRI, and we are adding endoscopic imaging, EUS, and ERCP. Even after all these imaging studies, do we have accurate and specific diagnosis? The answer is no at the current moment. If the lesion shows typical features of honeycomb appearance or IPMN showing clear communication with MPD, it is possible to diagnose serous cyst adenoma or IPMN. However, majority of the cyst nowadays falls into this category, oligonocular cystic tumor, showing small number of locules, usually less than 5-6 uh, number of locules, composed of a macro or micro cyst, sometimes it is unilocular cyst. These cysts can be either serous cystic neoplasm or mucinous cystic neoplasm or sometimes IPMN. So the differential diagnosis is quite troublesome. So we are adding US guided cystic fluid analysis. After cystic fluid aspiration, we can check the viscosity of the fluid and amylase, CA, glucose, and the cytology. Among these markers, CA seems to be the best marker for the differential diagnosis of mucinous lesion from non-mucinous lesion. This is a Dr. Brugge's data published in Gastroenterology 2004. If CA is more than 192, the sensitivity, specificity, and the accuracy of differential diagnosis of mucinous lesion from non-mucinous lesion were 73%, 84%, and 79%. It was quite good result. However, follow-up studies showed a little different result. This is data from Seoul National University Hospital. From their analysis, CA level 192 was not accurate enough, so they used a different cutoff value, 800 nanogram per milliliter. But even in this group, there were many cysts falls into this category, so-called indeterminate cyst. So it is clear that in significant number of patients, the differential diagnosis is not clear even after cystic fluid analysis. We are also trying to look at inside the cyst under direct vision. This is a live case during APDW 2015. To look at the cyst, 19 gauge needle puncture was done first, and then CN spy fiber was introduced into the 19 gauge needle and tried to look at the cyst wall and echogenic material here. Now we are looking at the cyst wall first. We can appreciate branching and networking vessels on the cyst wall and also floating mucinous material inside the cyst, suggesting the possibility of mucinous lesion. This is echogenic material. Initially, mural nodule was suspected, but by direct inspection, it was ball-like lesion with a smooth surface. It was mucin plug. So if we add direct visual inspection, we can get more information. But still, it is not accurate histologic diagnosis. However, most guidelines related to pancreatic cystic tumor, the management strategy is based on accurate histology.
These are guidelines related to pancreatic cystic neoplasm. Sendai and Fukuoka guidelines can be applied in IPMN and MCN cases. Revised Fukuoka guidelines are only focused on IPMN case. But the problem is, at the time of management, in many of cystic lesions, the differential diagnosis is not clear. So, tissue is still the issue in the management of pancreatic cystic neoplasm. Recently, EUS guided through the needle microposet biopsy was introduced. So, I'm going to discuss this technique in detail. The first through the needle biopsy was done by this uh, Spain group. They used very thin ELCP microposet. It was 0.8 mm in diameter. They inserted this uh, very thin microposet into the 19 gauge needle and got the biopsy from the cyst wall. And they were able to get this histologic diagnosis, mucinous cyst adenoma. It was more than 10 years ago. Nowadays, it is important to see the stromal tissue before the diagnosis of mucinous cystic neoplasm. Ovarian stroma is very, very important and we are adding immunohistochemical staining. Anyway, this was the first trial. Six years later, this American group used the Nobel through the needle microposet biopsy for the evaluation of the pancreatic cystic lesion. They inserted the very thin uh, microposet from US endoscopy. It was a moray posep and got the biopsy from the cyst wall. They were able to acquire a significant amount of tissue. And this was the first case IPMN gastric type and it corresponds to surgical pathology. This was the second case of IPMN, but in this case, there was a lot of squeezing artifact. This is close-up view of single-use moray microposet. It has serrated jaws with grasping power and uh, spring sheets allowing flexibility and it can go through a tortuous uh, needle pass uh, and it can go inside the 19 gauge needle. Our group has the chance to use this microposet for the histologic diagnosis of pancreatic cystic lesions. It uh, went through the 19 gauge needle and the jaws are open now and uh, it grasped the opposite side the cyst wall and after closer we are pulling the cyst uh, posep back and we can see a tenting phenomenon. This means the jaws are effectively grasping the cyst wall and then did uh, biopsy from the lesion. This is mucus plug. When he opened the microposep outside of the patient body, we can see this uh, tiny tissue fragment. For the preparation of such a tiny tissue fragment, we can use dedicated tissue extraction tool, which is provided by US endoscopy. This is tiny fragment uh, on moray posep and uh, it was mounted on filter paper. This is the tissue fragment. This is another case, a tiny tissue fragment on moray posep jaw and uh, this was mounted on filter paper here. Although it was tiny tissue fragment by visual inspection, on the microscopy, it was a significant amount of tissue showing single columnar epithelium here and the stromal tissue here. So we can add immunohistochemical staining and it, it was diffusely positive for progesterone receptor and we can diagnose this lesion as mucinous cystic neoplasm low grade. This is another case of pancreatic cystic tumor. It was unilocular cyst. After insertion of 19 gauge needle, we aspirated some amount of tissue to do cystic fluid analysis. And then through the 19 gauge needle, we inserted um, uh, moray posep and opened the jaw. We can appreciate a Y-shaped opened jaw here and then try to grasp 
the opposite wall of cyst. But because of the respiration and also uh, aortic movement, the target is frequently moving back and forth. So tight grasping of opposite cyst wall was quite difficult. It was slipping easily. But finally, after several attempts, uh, we were able to grasp the opposite wall tightly. And it can be confirmed by tenting phenomenon here. If the grasped amount of tissue is huge, we cannot remove the microposep through the needle. It does not close tightly. So in those cases, we can remove the 19 gauge needle and the microposep simultaneously. Uh, a little bit of technical tip. Tissue fragment was mounted on here on the filter paper and here. Upon histologic examination, uh, the lesion showed mucinous sepsalium with low-grade cytologic atypia. So we were able to diagnose IPMN gastric type. Uh, this is different case. The shape of hi histologic sample is quite different from previous one. The cystic lesion was actually located in aortocarpal space and uh, upon uh, immunohistochemical staining, D240 staining was positive, so it was consistent with cystic lymphangioma. We summarized our recent experience and uh, submitted in GIE and it was accepted for publication. We summarized 45 cases of Moray 4 save experience and the mean size of the cyst was 4.5 cm and the location was head, body, and tail. And the CA level was more than 192 nanogram per milliliter in 56% of the patients. And the mural nodule upon EUS imaging was observed in 24% of the patients. This table summarized the outcomes of EUS TTNB. Tissue acquisition was possible in 100% of the patients. The median number of needle paths was just one, but in some cases, we need to do up to six needle paths. Median number of biopsy was four. After one puncture, we can do repeated biopsy through the needle. So the number of needle passage and the number of biopsy can be different. The diagnostic uh, yield was 82% and the adverse event was observed in three cases. In one case, intracystic bleeding, and in one case, acute, in two cases, acute pancreatitis was developed. And the biopsy pathology was quite diverse. It can be IPMN, MCN, SCA, or SPN, or lymphoepithelial cyst observed in three cases, and the lymphangioma was observed in one case. In surgically operated cases, we compared EUS TTMB diagnosis and the surgical pathology. In all the cases, the histologic diagnosis was the same, but in two cases of IPMN, EUS TTMB cannot get the grade, but surgical pathology showed high grade dysplasia. When we compared the EUS TTMB and the EUS morphologic diagnosis, uh, there was one misdiagnosis case just by U.S. morphology. This table compared the presumptive diagnosis and uh, U.S. TTMB histology. Presumptive diagnosis is usually made by combination of CT MR image and the U.S. morphology and the U.S. cytology and the cystic fluid analysis. Even after combination of all these modalities, presumptive diagnosis frequently made misdiagnosis. Among 37 included patients, actually 10 patients showed misdiagnosis. Some of IPMN case was misdiagnosed as MCN, or MCN can be misdiagnosed as IPMN, or sometimes lymphoepithelial cyst was misdiagnosed as SPN. And some of uh, lymphoepithelial cysts was misdiagnosed as IPMN, 
And uh, sometimes IPM can be misdiagnosed as serous cyst adenoma, while serous cyst adenoma can be misdiagnosed as IPMN. So there are various cases of misdiagnosis. So from this table, it is clear that to get the accurate histologic diagnosis, we need to do US TTNB. Uh, there were some cases of failure during EUS TTMB. It was observed during initial training period. This is kind of new technology. So at the initial period of the biopsy, we failed some of the case. And the septal interference is one of the cause and the weak grasping power during microposep closure is one of the cause. This is close-up view of moray fossa. Not to lose the grasped tissue, I think the tooth direction can be refined. It can be folded inward, not to lose the grasped tissue. Now I'm going to move on to the review of published data. After the first report in 2016, 2018, a multi-center study and 2019, a large single center study was reported. In 2020, four different systematic review or meta-analysis were reported. Three in endoscopy international open and one in digestive endoscopy. These two are reported in endoscopy international open in 2020. Although there are four different studies, the baseline data are almost the same. So if you look at one of published systematic reviews, the technical success rate was 95.6%, almost 96%. Overall diagnostic yield was a little less than technical success. It was about 75%. Overall adverse event rate was about 10% and the intracystic hemorrhage or pancreatitis are common adverse event. When they compared the TTMB histology with the FNA cytology, all the data showed the superiority of EUS guided TTMB. In conclusion, EUS guided TTMB can give accurate histologic diagnosis in the patient with the pancreatic cystic tumor. Microposep TTMB shows high technical success rate and about 70 to 85% of diagnostic yield and low adverse event. With the refinement of serrated jaws, widespread usage is expected. Thank you very much for your kind attention.